Hi and welcome to the video. My name is Laura Robinson and I'm a sales engineer with Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online in the US. And in today's session, I'm going to walk us through how to set up users. We'll take a look at business units and security roles and teams in CRM 2011. This is a continuation of previous videos on administrative features that we typically cover in our administration webinar every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We've already looked at adding fields and configuring forms in a couple of different ways, including through data import. And this session is really focused on how to set up individuals within your organization for CRM Online. So let's get into the demo. This is my demonstration environment. It's actually a 30-day trial that I just created. And I've done just a few minor modifications, configurations to this environment. But right now, I'm the only listed user in the system. So I want to add more users, but I want to make sure that they have the right access to this, this application. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to drill into settings and just talk a little bit about what are the key things that you need to know about in order to set people up when you're evaluating CRM or when you're first rolling it out. And really what you should pay attention to are security roles as well as business units. We'll add a new user. And then once we've added a user or two, we'll set up some teams. So business units and security roles provide the layer of access that each user has to the application. Your business units are really like your org structure or your, your org hierarchy. And so they represent um, different groups like sales, marketing, service, maybe even subsidiaries within each of those groups. If I take a look at the business units I've set up thus far, I've got a root business unit, and every environment will have one business unit to start out, and that's essentially the name of the um, environment. And then you've got the ability to create children under that. And so underneath Laura's demo videos, I've got a global sales business unit, and underneath that, I have two subsidiary branches. I have Sales EMEA and Sales North America. Now, when you're evaluating CRM, this isn't that important. Um, let me just make a note. Um, this really is applicable for larger organizations that have these different business units that they would need to apply different security role privileges to. So let's take a look at security roles. Security roles in CRM give users access to the application in different ways. And out of the box, you'll see you've got about 14 individual security roles. And a user needs to have at least one of these security roles in order to access CRM. Because if you think about it, if a user doesn't have any security role, the system doesn't know what kind of access the user should have. So this helps define what a person can do in the application. And each of these security roles apply per business unit. So a salesperson in EMEA may have or need to have slightly different uh, security role privileges than a salesperson in North America. So let's, let's drill into the North America business unit and let's take a look at the salesperson role. So the key thing about uh, any security role is to note the key at the bottom of the screen. And this key indicates what kind of privileges this role has, a person in this role has. And so we've got the empty circle, which is non-selected. We've got one-sixth of the pie, which is user-defined. Half of it is in that business unit. And then we've got a parent-child business unit. And then we've got organization-wide level access. So let's take a look at how this applies. Within a security role, you can apply privileges according to different record types or entities, and you can also apply them to different functions in the application. So if I scroll down here and take a look at some of these miscellaneous privileges, for example, uh, let's take publish reports. Now this is by default set to no access for a salesperson, but if we have some particularly, you know, really advanced power user reporting salespeople, 
I might want to give them access to publish a report. Now a couple of tips about this. Um, in order to change any one of these settings, we can simply click on the circle and toggle through the different settings. If we want to set any of these settings in bulk, we can either click on the row name or the column name to do that in bulk. So one of my best practice recommendation, recommendations all the time is for any user other than a system admin or system customizer or anyone else who needs that really um, top level of security to the data, turn off delete. So I click on delete, we can toggle through and simply turn this off. So you can always deactivate records, but once you delete them, they're gone from the database. They, you can't retrieve them again unless you've um, captured a, a backup of your database. So typically you've got the ability to set privileges um, according to create, read, write, delete, and these are the main um, privileges you can set to any record type. Append and append to mean uh, those records that you can relate to one another and it's kind of you know the inverse of, of uh, each one here. So if I had an activity, I would append it to an account. An account has an activity appended to it. And then assigning and sharing is pretty straightforward. You can assign, you can share things out. Now you can walk through this on your own if you like and take a look at the marketing, sales, and service areas, business management, service management, Customization. Customization really allows uh, your users to, to do different functions in the system rather than uh, modify record types. And then the last thing I want to point out is custom entities. So in our last video, we, we imported a, a new uh, spreadsheet of a custom entity. We created a custom entity and custom fields. And whenever you create a custom entity, you'll need to go into security role settings and enable that for the users that need to have access to that custom entity. By default, it's turned off, as you can see here. Last point about security roles is that we can always copy roles. So you have these roles out of the box, but if you wanted to um, preserve that out of the box role and just create a new one to play with or to work with, go ahead and copy the role. Okay, so now that we've got some of that defined, I'm going to go in and create a new user. So creating users is relatively straightforward and in fact the process has not changed from CRM 4.0 to CRM 2011 with online. You'll see here is my one enabled user, me, and I'm going to create a new one. And you'll see right away that it's asking me which business unit to put this user in. So let's say we want to create a new user in Sales North America and I'll click next. And then this next step I need to indicate or specify at least one security role so that the user can have access to the system. Now it's not required, but if you're, if you're sending the invitations right away, then you'll need to have at least one security role apply here. Now if you're in a trial phase, uh, chances are you'll probably just add your, your trial participants as system admins so that they can work around with the system. But if you're thinking more realistically about who is going to have what access, you want to test out that access, um, you'll want to uh, select one of these other applicable security roles. So I'll choose salesperson. And it'll take me to the next screen. Okay, so I'm going to enter in some data here. Now one point about the email address it's asking for, a best practice recommendation is to use your organization's email address. Um, if, you ch if you care to, you can use a Windows Live ID that the user specifies. Um, either way, you can tie a, an existing email address to a Windows Live ID at the point that the individual gets the invitation. So I'll go ahead and add Rich. And you'll see the license is available. Move down here. So another best practice is that for each, each security role, invite your users per that security role so you can do this in bulk. You also have the option of importing users if you want to take that approach. 
But if you're in a trial right now, chances are you'll probably just do um, a couple here and there. So this next step asked me if I want to go ahead and send the invitations now or send them later. Now there, are a, there's a good reason why you might want to send invitations later. There are a few good reasons. Um, first of all, if you don't plan on rolling this out yet, then definitely send the invitations later. If you plan on just bench or just you know putting some users in the system so you can assign records to them and see how that data looks, I would send invitations later. If you want to actually invite someone to use it now, then go ahead and send the, the invitations now. In this case, I'm going to opt to ask, uh, send Rich an invitation later and create the new user. And once it's finished, it'll give you a summary and go ahead and close. And you'll see Rich show up here in my enabled users list. Now, the next thing you may want to explore doing is adding some teams. Although adding teams isn't required by any stretch of the imagination. With CRM 2011, you have the ability though to assign records to teams uh, or an individual user. So this is kind of nice if you've got a workflow process that is routing leads and you want to route to a team. Or if you've got, you know, service cases coming in and you want to assign them to a team rather than an individual person. It just helps to set up that process and to test that out. And so to add teams, we just simply go in here and add teams. As you can see, I already have one set up for Sales North America, so let me just open that one. And what I want to do is add Rich to that team. So I've set it up, I'm, I'm the owner, the administrator, and to add members, I simply click on members and find Rich. So let's go ahead and add Rich as a member. There he is. Now because teams do operate like individual users and in that we can assign records, we also need to assign security roles to teams. So I can go ahead and manage these roles and it works just like we might assign a security role to a user. And that's that really. So I'll go ahead and save and close this. And so now I have one user set up in a security role in a business unit and also assigned to a team. Now I want to point out just a couple more resources and there are plenty of resources on this. Um, the business unit security roles and adding users process has not changed uh, from CRM 4.0 to CRM 2011. And we actually have some really great videos that go into more depth more explanation around the definitions of these two of these uh, features and so I encourage you to check out these resources if you want to get just some more um, educational information about how to set up business unit security roles and users and with that I want to thank you for your your uh, attention and your participation and I wish you all a wonderful day